Let us pray. Dear Father Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ Lord, thank you for the privilege and opportunity to minister your word and your mind to your people. Dear Father Lord, open the eyes of every listener to the understanding of the truth that he or she is meant to enjoy good health and vitality, and as a result, let their heritage in you, which includes good health, long life, and vitality, be given back to them in the name of Jesus Christ. For you say in your word of Joel chapter 2, verses 25 through 26. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the cankerworm, and the caterpillar, and the pommelworm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, that hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. Lord, let every listener's health be restored to them in the mighty and working name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now before we discuss the technology to make divine health a reality for us, we have got to establish, first and foremost, that divine health and vitality are God's will for us. Because until you know what belongs to you, you won't be able to demand or establish it as your reality. Because the faith that makes a thing a reality is a knowledge-based faith. Hence the Bible says in Romans 10 verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So you have got to hear so that your faith can be consolidated on the truth and facts of God's word. As follows are the testaments that God includes as part of his plan for us, his children, in good health and wellness. In 3 John chapter 1 verse 2, the Bible says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. Here, God categorically makes it clear that he wants us healthy and full of life and vitality. In John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus reiterated this when he said, The thief does not come except to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. Meaning that among the reasons for his coming is to restore health and vitality and to bring healing where bruises and injuries have already been incurred and sustained. That was what the Bible meant when it says in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And Jesus demonstrated it when he came by going around healing the sick and delivering those who were oppressed by the devil. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. The good news, however, is that the health plan of God for us and miraculous healing didn't end with Jesus being on earth, it is a continuous manifestation in our continued reality till there will be no more sickness, affliction, and diseases, as the Bible says in Isaiah 33 verse 24. And the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick, the people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 15, the Bible says, And the Lord will take away from you all sickness, and will afflict you with none of the terrible diseases of Egypt which you have known, but will lay them on all those who hate you. And in Exodus 23 verse 25, it says, So you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of you, now, what is the wisdom of God to make this a reality for us? Because many mighty works of God answer only to our obedience in obeying His instruction and following the divine guidance and wisdom of God made available to us. 
What then is the wisdom for us to enjoy health and vitality? And the Bible answers, among other things. Here are the cures for sicknesses and diseases as advanced and counseled by God. And as we know, the advice and counsel of God are for our benefit and are most proficient and effective in solving and tackling every challenge of life and even afterlife challenges. And God's counsel and advice for us, if we must enjoy good health, long life, and vitality are. Number 1. Rest. You must make time to rest from all your labor and laboring, as God has exemplified and ordered us in His Word. Genesis chapter 2, verse 3. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it He rested from all His work which God had created and made. God's rest on the seventh day is a model for the kind of Sabbath rest He wants for His people. God wants us in all our works and laboring to find time or take time out to rest, or else we may break down and die prematurely. So the resting period is ordained by God. Observe it. Take time out of your labor to have a nap, relax, or even enjoy some leisure. Is not a sin, rather, it is recommended. Number 2. Never entertain or accommodate anger for a long time. As a matter of fact, beyond being dangerous to your health, anger is also a sin. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 and 27, the Bible says, Be angry, and do not sin, do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Nor give place to the devil. And regarding your health, the Bible says, Proverbs 17 verse 22, A merry heart does good, like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. So anger and grudges are killers and enemies of good health and vitality, and the Bible identifies them as being so. Number 3. You must eat healthily. The Bible says in Psalms 103, verse 5, Who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. I think that is clear enough. As God gives you grace, eat good things to continually renew your health and vitality. Number 4. Avoid worries and anxiety. Just as the Bible cautions and counsels us believers in Matthew 6, from verses 25 to 34. It says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or, what shall we drink, or, what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Number 5. Be always joyful and exude joy and happiness, never minding what the situation seems to portend. The Bible says in Habakkuk chapter 3, 
verses 17 through 18. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will joy in the God of my salvation. And in Joel chapter 2, verses 21 to 23, the Bible says, Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And in Philippians 4 verse 4, the Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, Rejoice. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, dear Father, Lord, for having in your plans for our good health and longevity. Dear Lord, I pray for everyone whose health is challenged or is being challenged. Lord, cause them to understand through this message that good health, wellness, and longevity are their heritages in Christ. Let their health spring forth now, Lord, as I pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. For those that are bruised and afflicted, in the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke the devil behind every one of their afflictions. I set everyone who is diseased or afflicted free now in the name above every other name, the name of Jesus Christ the Messiah. Amen.